How does an individual virus particle, which has no arms or legs or mode of transportation, accomplish the task of getting inside a cell so that it can replicate? I'm Brian Mallow, and this video is part of my ongoing series produced in partnership with Sigma Xi, the Scientific Research Honor Society. I spoke with Dr. Mark Peoples. He's a molecular virologist, a professor at Ohio State University, and a principal investigator at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus. For 46 years, Mark has been studying a different respiratory virus called RSV. Although, like so many labs around the world, his team is now focused on the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. At one point, Mark will describe some behavior of the RSV virus, but mostly what he's talking about is the structure and function of proteins on the surface of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that enable it to get inside your cells. When this virus forms, I, I told you it's kind of budded from the cell surface. You end up with this membrane and there are two major proteins sticking out all over that surface. When that comes to the next cell, uh, it's the attachment protein that binds and then the second protein that causes the membrane of the virus to fuse with the membrane of the cell and spills the guts of the virus into the cell cytoplasm. So, so that fusion protein is essential. And every virus that has an envelope has to have a fusion protein to get it in. Is that, so, so on the, on the SARS-CoV-2, is it this spiky protein that we yeah. hear about? Is that the fusion protein? Yeah, actually with, um, with SARS, that protein is actually both. It has the attachment function at the top, but once it attaches, apparently, that part folds back like a flower opening, and that releases the fusion part, which is on the inside. And um, both that fusion protein and, well, we don't, we don't know for certain, but by analogy, which is the way we do things at the first approximation, uh, the fusion protein for RSV once it's triggered, undergoes a huge conformational change. The protein lengthens by more than two times. So it becomes two, probably 2.3 times as long. And at the very tip of it is a highly hydrophobic patch of amino acids. That harpoons the cell, the target cell, and then brings the two membranes together and causes them to fuse. So it's amazing. Uh, Little, little, it doesn't have a motor, but it's able to do this amazing job of, of cell to cell, well, virus to cell fusion. That idea of fusing a membrane from the virus with the cell in order to infect um, is shared by probably two thirds of the animal viruses out there. So there are some that don't have a membrane. So they, they, they get in by a different mechanism. Uh, but about two-thirds of viruses have a membrane. So it's a really common thing. And there are commonalities between the fusion proteins of a herpes virus or HIV or SARS or RSV. There are other differences, too. So um, it's, it's a really kind of interesting field. But it's actually fairly simple. Once you can get these lipids from these two opposing membranes to come together and fuse, then everything from the inside is spilled into the cytoplasm, and now that virus can begin to replicate. 